Good evening, guys. Andrew here. Today, I'm going to be presenting my presentation on gifted and talented students as part of our disability research paper. Okay, so before we start anything, before we start talking about gifted and talented students, I'm just going to let you guys know that I will be attaching my PowerPoint as a PDF document so you guys can view it for reference at the discussion board and you can freely just comment and give me your feedback on what you think about this presentation and ask any questions that you guys would like to know about gifted and talented students. So let's start on the presentation and let's start talking a little bit more about gifted and talented students. All right, so first off, before we dive into the definition of gifted and talented students, I wanna talk about a little bit about the history of what gifted and talented is and how did it start? So back in 1870 in St. Louis, Missouri, tracking programs were implemented that would allow students that displayed high levels of intellectual capacity to complete eight grades in less than eight years. Once that this was further studied and discovered, in 1902, the first school that was dedicated completely with a gifted child's curriculum, since they needed different entered instruction given their intellectual capacity, was established in Massachusetts. As a consequence of this, in 1916, special classes for gifted students were starting to be created in Los Angeles, California, as well as in Cincinnati. Let me just say that schools for gifted children still exist to this moment. However, now traditional schools are becoming more open to the idea of having gifted and talented children in their community, in their schools, by establishing classes that are dedicated specifically for them and the workload that is required of them and all the services and activities that differ from that ordinary instruction that they need to essentially not receive. So also magnet programs are being established given the fact that they have this intellectual capacity, they have these creative abilities. So these magnet programs are suitable for the kind of level that they're supposed to be regardless of their age, experience, and environment. All right, so now since we talked a little bit about the history, but let's talk about what actually gifted and talented means. So gifted and talented is defined as children and youth who display outstanding talent in performing at high level of accomplishment compared to their classmates. So compared to the classrooms, meaning like classmates of their age, of their experience, um, and of the environment. So exceptional talents are not only shown in intellectual capacity, I know I've been mentioning that as well, but it's also shown in their creative ability, so things that have to do with the way they think outside the box, the way they can probably pick up a, a musical instrument or what have you, but they're just exposing and you know creating this kind of ability of creativity, essentially, if you will. And also showing artistic skills, so knowledge and appreciation for the humanities and everything else. So as I mentioned before, they also require services and activities that differ from ordinary instruction in schools. Remember, gifted and talented students, they're a special classification of students with exceptionalities. These kids are just highly intelligent. They have these great skills in one or more areas, maybe even in awe. So their instruction has to be completely different because if not, there's not as much academic or intellectual stimulation that they need in order to succeed and thrive in society. All right, let's look at causes and prevalence. What causes this and how often do you see the fact of gifted students in a school age population? All right, so research indicates that possible genetic links can cause a child to be gifted and talented. This is basically saying that this trait is inherent and parents can also have it. Grandparents can show um, signs of gifted and, gift and talent. It's just really, this possibility and this high possibility that there is a genetic link occurred to it um, based on research. Also, if it's not much about genetic links, it also depends on environmental factors. So these are things that even can be manipulated by the fact of how the environment was before they entered school. So for example, the type of play, what kind of toys did they have? Did they, were they limited on their use of technology? And did they have another way of like playing or other types of materials that were available to them that were accessible to them before they entered school? So for example, playing with an abacus, um, playing with chess, playing things that would develop their mental ability at a young age in their upbringing. And also, believe it or not, research has also indicated that maternal involvement has also affected 
and contributed to the fact that a student could be gifted and talented. Now, prevalence is difficult to tell, but statistics have suggested that three to 5% of the school age population fall under this classification of being gifted and talented. However, we are still discovering more about gifted and talented individuals. So perhaps the six through 10% will, will be you know, available pretty soon, given that more discoveries are made and given that more research is conducted on these type of individuals. So let's talk about the characteristics of given the gifted and talented students. Now, we've said by the definition, gifted and talented students display characteristics such as a high level of intellectual capacity, also performing very well in academics, showing creative and artistic abilities that are way beyond that of their age, well-adjusted social behaviors and manners, you know, basically having manners with somebody, you know, addressing somebody politely for their age, good morning, good afternoon, how are you doing, all these kind of things, and just exemplary leadership skills. So when it comes to their exemplary leadership skills, I mean that gifted and talented students often show such a great at an adequate level of task management and execution that is just unbelievable when you study them in detail. You just it's something that needs to be seen for you to understand. And it's just something beautiful how they just given the task, the way they manage it, the way they organize it, the way they break it down, and then they execute it successfully. Due to these characteristics, they're often accelerated through the program by means of intervention, meaning that these students, since they're exposed to this kind of behavior and these kind of characteristics, as they're young, they are often put through intervention services where they are accelerated through the program, meaning they enter school early and they mingle with older, older children to develop that type of social and emotional and also those cognitive abilities that are just suitable for them as a whole. And uh, incredibly and interestingly enough, they also show signs of perfectionism as well. I'm going to go a little bit in detail on that once I'm done with this and to talk a little bit about what teachers should know about gifted and talented students. All right, so let's look at the instructional implications for teachers. What teachers should realize and consider when teaching gifted and talented students. Number one, try to make every single resource available and accessible to them. Because I think at this point, and anyone will tell you that it is important for them to develop their full individual potential, given in the manner they carry themselves already by seeing well-adjusted social and emotional behaviors. Parental and peer involvement is highly recommended. You saw that research has indicated that some causes of being gifted and talented can fall under maternal involvement. So having parents involved in that kind of environment will also ensure that you have, you as a teacher will be successful in educating a gifted and talented child because face it, you're with a child about eight hours a day in school, but their parents are with them for their whole life. So it's always important to not only learn from what that child can have or the way that you can educate that child, but also you can just take that experience and apply it with other gifted and talented students that you get in the future in your classroom. Now, acceleration, I've already spoke about this, is the early intervention service that allows gifted students to enter school at a young age and work closely with older students as a means to achieve long-term academic success. Usually when you do this, um, they're able to mingle very well with students that are older than them that can teach them of different experiences. And just for that, you can have short, they, it's just something beautiful because these students can have short term and long term success all throughout their high school years, their college years, they can have great occupational success. And number one, they can just have overall happiness and satisfaction throughout their entire lives. And you can learn that from acceleration. And that's why I say that this early intervention service is, is very important for gifted and talented students. Why? Like I said before, for students to reach that potential and for them to go off to college, go off to any career that they decide to enter, 
and have a beautiful, you know, have a beautiful, have a happy, healthy, satisfied life. That all starts with you guys. That all starts with the teachers. So that's important to understand. These are things that are important to understand when you are going to teach gifted and talented students. All right. So as I mentioned before, I was going to go over the top five things that teachers should know about gifted students. And I wanted to go a little bit in detail to certain things. Okay. So for number one, it is important to consider the social and emotional development of gifted and talented students. I like to look at a metaphor that I even included in my paper, where let's say you have hydrogen and you have oxygen. You put the correct number of molecules with those two elements and you can form water. However, when you form water already at that point, it's impossible to separate. It can neither be separated, nor can it look back to anything it remotely was before. So why do I decide to go over this? Because it's important to acknowledge that there's always a social and emotional message for every lesson that you teach to a gifted and talented student. And it's important to recognize and develop their, not only their cognitive abilities, but their social and emotional abilities that they can have to associate with others. Number two, there's still a major underrepresentation of this, uh, this exceptionality affecting underachievers, female students, twice exceptional learners, and those that are considered culturally and linguistically diverse. It's often unfortunate that just like any other exceptionality that we have learned about in this class, gifted and talented students are underrepresented as well. And for those to not be taken these type of people for not to be taken, you know, in consideration, you know, students that are underachievers, students that are female, who are gifted as well. Those gifted students that are twice exceptional learners, I will go into detail now in number three. And those that come from a culturally and linguistically diverse background, meaning speaking another language, speaking, you know, coming from another culture. And let me tell you, just taking this bullet point into consideration. This is why sometimes these students that have that potential to strive for the better often slip through the cracks because they don't have this opportunity or they just don't have this consideration as they're supposed to have. Number three, gifted students can also be twice exceptional, meaning that they can have another exceptional disability along with their current exceptional ability. So believe it or not, gifted students, like I said before, for students to be gifted, they have to excel in one or more areas, not in all of them. So this means that even a gifted student can have a learning disability. A gifted student can have ADHD. A gifted student could be autistic. Can and they are as well. Sometimes gifted students that are twice exceptional, like number two said, they are often not represented adequately like they're supposed to because there's just no resources there's just no knowledge on the topic just yet so just so you guys know that if you ever decide to become special ed teachers and you're dealing with gifted students know that this can exist number four gifted students may be perfectionists but it is important to watch out for these cases for several reasons let me dive in a little bit on perfectionism you have what's called normal perfectionism, and you also have what's called neurotic perfectionism. Normal perfectionists, which are what a lot of gifted students might fall into, are those students or just perfectionists, just individuals in general, that like to strive to achieve their goals. And they just go on for it. And then they just like to be very detailed and like everything to be to the certain point where they can prove that satisfaction afterwards because it's at their own convenience. It's at their own manner that they're conducting themselves when they perform an action. But that goes also, that doesn't go without saying that normal perfectionists also know their limitations. Neurotic perfectionists do not. And neurotic perfectionists tend to, at the same time, they perform the same actions and have the same characteristics and possess the same characteristics that a normal perfectionist does. However, they tend to neglect themselves and this can be detrimental to the overall mental well-being and satisfaction at the end of the day. 
and most of these students that are like that in the future, believe it or not, research has indicated, they often resort to having a depressed lifestyle, low self-esteem, low confidence, and often in some cases, unfortunately, we have seen suicides because of this reason. So it's important that if a gifted student is a perfectionist, make sure that they don't neglect themselves and that they know their limitations as well because they tend to have limitations, which is the same thing as going back to what I said in number one, it is important to develop their social and emotional behaviors. Last but not least, number five, gifted students often strive for the potential of what they can learn and not all that they can achieve. All right, so like I said, yeah, gifted students, gifted students tend to be perfectionists, but at the same time, there are those gifted students that even though they like to strive for the best, just because they got 100% on the test doesn't mean anything to them. And most of them will tell you. There has been testimonies of gifted students telling their teachers, hey, look, I don't care that I got 100% on this test. I don't care that I'm the, I was the one that set those curve for the class because I'm a high grade. I care that I learned something. I care that I can carry out some kind of social and emotional message out and apply it to my community and thrive in society with it. So these are just five things that you guys should know if you ever decide to be a teacher in special education and also looking into a case of gifted students. All right guys, so this is my reference page. Um, basically, so I use our textbook and I use three articles that I found that have to do with gifted and talented students and certain things that relate to their behavioral characteristics and their history. And as you can see for some humor, I put a GIF of Regina George where it says, where did you get it? Where did I get my references? There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, I wanna thank you again for watching and for watching my presentation. And just like I said before, um, please comment, like, you know, um, leave your feedback. What did you learn? What questions do you have? What can, what do you think can be done with dealing with gifted and talented students? So again, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed my presentation and I hope you guys have a great evening as well.